In this video presentation we will discuss about the veterinary important viral diseases under the family Coronaviridae. The word Corona in Latin, derived from ancient Greek means, crown, or gaseous envelope of sun normally visible during solar eclipse. Classification. Coronaviridae family classified under the Baltimore group 4 with the order Nidoviral. The order Nidoviral is named from Latin Nidus, meaning nest. As all viruses in this order produce a nested set of subgenomic mRNAs during replication. Some of the veterinary important viral diseases under this family are avian infectious bronchitis, transmissible gastroenteritis which we will be discussing in detail in this video. And other diseases such as calf and canine corona, feline infectious peritonitis, blue comb disease, SARS, MERS, COVID-19. Virus Morphology The virus is enveloped, possess helical capsid about 120 nanometer size which resembles the crown-shaped virus. The viral genome encodes five structural proteins namely peplomer glycoprotein, transmembrane glycoproteins, M and E, nucleid protein and hemagglutinin, esterase. Genomic Organization The genome is single-stranded, monopartite and positive sense RNA. The genome length is 27 to 32 kilo base pair length. The 5' prime end is capped and the 3' prime end is poly, A, tailed. This positive sense RNA produce a nested set of subgenomic mRNAs during replication. Virus replication. The virus replicates in the cytoplasm and genome is infectious. As we already discussed the genome is positive sense RNA that will produce a nested set of subgenomic mRNAs during replication, which in turn translated to different viral proteins. First we will discuss on avian infectious bronchitis, IB. Infection. The disease is caused by the avian infectious bronchitis virus of genus coronavirus. This virus causes acute and highly contagious respiratory disease in chickens. So the disease is characterized by a respiratory signs including gasping, coughing, sneezing, tracheal rails, and nasal discharge. In young chickens, there will be severe respiratory distress. But in layers. Respiratory distress, nephritis, drop in egg production, and loss of internal egg quality and eggshell quality which leads to economic loss in chicken operations. These are vaccine serotypes of IBV Connecticut, Massachusetts, Arkansas, Delaware and Georgia 98 serotype. Source of infection. Infected poultry act as the principal source of virus transmission through respiratory secretions, fecal excretions, direct contact between poultry, by aerosols, contaminated feed and water. Pathogenesis. First the virus enters the host through inhalation. Then the virus replicates in respiratory tract. That is in the ciliated respiratory epithelii cells. Followed by viremia. And the virus distributed to various organs such as reproductive system, kidney and intestinal tract. Severity of this disease depends. The infections originating in upper respiratory tract may be less severe. But if it occurs in lower respiratory tract may increases the severity. Three forms of infectious bronchitis respiratory renal and reproductive form number one respiratory form here the birds show the respiratory signs which includes gasping coughing sneezing tracheal rails and nasal discharge on post-mortem inflammation and accumulation of caseous yellow mucus exudate in the trachea nasal passages and sinuses will be observed this form is more pronounced in young birds with diminishing signs in older birds the picture depicting the gasping respiratory symptom in 10 week old pullet. Number 2. Renal form. Gray, Holt, and Australian T strain are responsible for this form. These strains, since they target the renal system, they are referred as nephrotropic strains. They have a high affinity that is attraction for the kidneys and the ureters. On post mortem examination, swollen and inflamed kidneys, distension of the ureters with buildup of urate deposits will be observed. The picture at left, depicting the normal kidney and ureter and the picture at right, depicting the swollen kidneys and ureters containing urolith deposits that is uric acid crystals. Number 3. Reproductive form. This form occurs in layers. Here the virus target the ovaries and the reproductive tract. So the flocks will be suffering from large drop in egg production and eggshell abnormality. The picture depicting the eggshell abnormality such as wrinkled eggshell and thin shelled eggs. The table shows that the respiratory form is highly pronounced in young birds and the reproductive forms in adult layers. Diagnosis can be done in field level or in the laboratories. Field diagnosis. Depend upon the data of history of the infection, clinical symptoms and post-mortem findings. Next, 
Laboratory Diagnosis For lab diagnosis, tracheal mucosa, lung samples are collected during acute phase of infection. On other times, feces, kidneys or cecal tonsillar tissue can be collected. The virus can be cultivated in lab by two ways. Number 1. Tracheal organ culture. Here 20-day-old embryos are used for virus isolation. The advantage is that this virus produces stasis of the tracheal cilia on initial inoculation. After inoculation and incubation, presence of virus in tracheal smears is identified by fluorescent antibody technique. Second method of cultivation of this virus is embryonated egg inoculation. Allantoic cavity inoculation on 9 to 11 day chicken embryos can be done. 5 to 7 days post inoculation, embryopathy such as curling and dwarfing of the embryos, clubbing of toes, embryo stunting will be observed, which is a pathognomonic feature. The picture depicting the embryopathy, the right one, normal 18 day old chicken embryo, the left, two infected embryos of same age, showing dwarfing. These are some of the laboratory tests can be done for diagnosis. For antigen detection, direct fat, reverse transcriptase PCR can be done. For antibody detection, agar gel precipitation test, virus neutralization test, hemagglutination inhibition test and ALISA can be done. No specific antiviral drugs are available for this infection. Only antibiotics can be used to prevent secondary bacterial infections. For prevention and control of this infection, vaccination and other measures can be followed. Both attenuated and inactivated virus vaccines are available. Attenuated vaccines is given to 1 to 14 day old chicks by spray, drinking water, or eye drop. Birds are commonly revaccinated. Other measures such as thorough disinfection of premises, transport vehicles, and equipment, strict isolation, depopulation, and disposal of infected one are followed. With this we are coming to the end of infectious bronchitis. Next infection under this family. Transmissible gastroenteritis. T. G. E. The disease is caused by the TGE virus of genus coronavirus. This virus causes acute highly contagious disease in pigs characterized by profuse diarrhea and vomiting. Here piglets are high susceptible for this infection. Porcine respiratory coronavirus. PRCV which is a respiratory variant or form of transmissible gastroenteritis virus. This virus was first emerged in Europe. Prevention and control of this infection. Vaccination. Both attenuated and inactivated virus vaccines are available. Here the lactogenic immunity in young pigs are aimed. The objective is to maintain immunity in the colostrums by vaccinating the sow. Passive lactogenic immunity remains the most promising and effective way to protect neonatal suckling piglets from enteric diseases. Due to impermeable placenta, pigs are born agammaglobulinic and are highly susceptible to large range of infectious agents. So the piglets rely solely on colostrum and milk antibodies for maternal lactogenic immunity. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.